How's that again? Presence. The truth about SETI. The search for extraterrestrial intelligence SETI is a collective term for scientific searches for intelligent extraterrestrial life. For example, monitoring electromagnetic radiation for signs of transmissions from civilizations on other planets. Scientific investigation began shortly after the advent of radio in the early 1900s, and focused international efforts have been ongoing since the 1980s. In 2015 Stephen Hawking and Israeli billionaire Yuri Milner announced the Breakthrough Listen Project, a $100 million 10-year attempt to detect signals from nearby stars. In the 19th century, many books and articles speculated about the possible inhabitants of other planets. Many people believe that intelligent beings might live on the moon Mars, and, or, Venus. Since travel to other planets was not possible at the time, some people suggested ways to signal extraterrestrials even before radio was discovered. Carl Friedrich Gauss is often credited with an 1820 proposal that a giant triangle and three squares, the Pythagoras, could be drawn on the Siberian tundra. The outlines of the shapes would have been 10 mile wide strips of fine forest, whereas the interiors could be filled with rye or wheat. Joseph Johann Littrau proposed in 1819 to use the Sahara as a sort of blackboard. Giant trenches several hundred yards wide could delineate 20 mile wide shapes. Then the trenches would be filled with water, and then enough kerosene could be poured on top of the water to burn for six hours. Using this method, a different signal could be sent every night. Meanwhile, other astronomers were looking for signs of life on other planets. In 1822 Franz von Grithusen thought he saw a giant city and evidence of agriculture on the moon, but astronomers using more powerful instruments refuted his claims. Grithusen also believed he saw evidence of life on Venus Ashen light had previously been observed on the dark side of Venus, and he postulated that it was caused by a great fire festival put on by the inhabitants to celebrate their new emperor. Later he revised his position, stating that the Venusians could be burning their rainforest to make more farmland. By the late 1800s, the possibility of life on the moon was put to rest. Astronomers at that time believed in the Kentler Place hypothesis, which stated that the farthest planets from the Sun are the oldest, therefore Mars was more likely to have advanced civilizations than Venus. Subsequent investigations focused on contacting Martians. In 1877 Giovanni Schiaparelli announced he had discovered cannoli, channels, in Italian, which occur naturally, and mistranslated as canals, which are artificial, on Mars. This was followed by 30 years of enthusiasm about the possibility of life on Mars eventually the Martian canals proved illusory. The inventor Charles Cross was convinced that pinpoints of light observed on Mars and Venus were the lights of large cities. He spent years of his life trying to get funding for a giant mirror with which to signal the Martians. The mirror would be focused on the Martian desert, where the intense reflected sunlight could be used to burn figures into the Martian sand. Inventor Nikola Tesla mentioned many times during his career that he thought his inventions such as his Tesla coil, used in the role of a resonant receiver, could be used to communicate with other planets, and that he even had observed repetitive signals of what he believed were extraterrestrial radio communications coming from Venus or Mars in 1899. These signals turned out to be terrestrial radiation, however, around 1900, the Gosman Prize was created. The first person to establish interplanetary communication would be awarded 100,000 francs, under one stipulation. Mars was excluded because Madame Gosman thought communicating with Mars would be too easy to deserve the prize. Nikola Tesla claimed in 1937 that he should receive the prize for his discovery relating to the interstellar transmission of energy. There have been many earlier searches for extraterrestrial intelligence within the solar system. In 1896 Nikola Tesla suggested that an extreme version of his wireless electrical transmission system could be used to contact beings on Mars. In 1899, while conducting experiments at his Colorado Springs experimental station, he thought he had detected a signal from Mars since an odd repetitive static signal seemed to cut off when Mars set in the night sky. Analysis of Tesla's research has led to a range of explanations including 
Tesla simply misunderstood the new technology he was working with, that he may have been observing signals from Marconi's European radio experiments, and even speculation that he could have picked up naturally occurring radio noise caused by a moon of Jupiter, Io, moving through the magnetosphere of Jupiter. In the early 1900s, Guglielmo Marconi, Lord Kelvin and David Peck Todd also stated their belief that radio could be used to contact Martians, with Marconi stating that his stations had also picked up potential Martian signals. On August 21st to 23rd, 1924, Mars entered an opposition closer to Earth than at any time in the century before or the next 80 years. In the United States, the National Radio Silence Day was promoted during the 36-hour period from August 21st to 23rd, with all radios quiet for five minutes on the hour every hour. At the United States Naval Observatory, the radio receiver was lifted 3 kilometers, 1.9 miles, above the ground in a dirigible tuned to a wavelength between 8 and 9 kilometers, using a radio camera, developed by Amherst College and Charles Francis Jenkins. The program was led by David Peck Todd with the military assistance of Admiral Edward W. Eberle, Chief of Naval Operations, with William F. Friedman, Chief Cryptographer of the United States Army, assigned to translate any potential Martian messages. A 1959 paper by Philip Morrison and Giuseppe Colconi first pointed out the possibility of searching the microwave spectrum. It proposed frequencies and a set of initial targets. In 1960, Cornell University astronomer Frank Drake performed the first modern SETI experiment, named Project Ozma. After the Queen of Oz in L. Frank Baum's fantasy books, Drake used a radio telescope 26 meters, 85 feet, in diameter at Green Bank, West Virginia, to examine the stars Tau Ceti and Epsilon Eridani near the 1.420 GHz marker frequency, the region of the radio spectrum dubbed the water hole, due to its proximity to the hydrogen and hydroxyl radical spectral lines. A 400 kHz band around the marker frequency was scanned using a single channel receiver with a bandwidth of 100 Hz. He found nothing of interest. Soviet scientists took a strong interest in SETI during the 1960s and performed a number of searches with omnidirectional antennas in the hope of picking up powerful radio signals. Soviet astronomer Iosif Slosky wrote the pioneering book in the field Universe, Life, Intelligence 1962, which was expanded upon by American astronomer Carl Sagan as the best-selling book Intelligent Life in the Universe 1966. In the March 1955 issue of Scientific American, John D. Krauss described an idea to scan the cosmos for natural radio signals using a flat plane radio telescope equipped with a parabolic reflector. Within two years, his concept was approved for construction by Ohio State University. With a total of US $71,000, equivalent to $685,015 in 2021, in grants from the National Science Foundation, construction began on an 8 hectare, 20 acre, plot in Delaware, Ohio. This Ohio State University radio observatory telescope was called Big Air. Later, it began the world's first continuous SETI program, called the Ohio State University SETI program. In 1971 NASA funded a SETI study that involved Drake, Barney, Oliver of Hewlett Packard Laboratories, and others. The resulting report proposed the construction of an Earth-based radio telescope array with 1,500 dishes known as Project Cyclops. The price tag for the Cyclops array was US $10 billion. Cyclops was not built, but the report formed the basis of much SETI work that followed. The Ohio State SETI program gained fame on August 15, 1977, when Jerry Emmon, a project volunteer, witnessed a startlingly strong signal received by the telescope. He quickly circled the indication on the printout and scribbled the exclamation WOW in the margin. Dubbed the WOW signal, it is considered by some to be the best candidate for a radio signal from an artificial extraterrestrial source ever discovered, but it has not been detected again in several additional searches. In 1980 Carl Sagan, Bruce Murray, and Louis Friedman founded the U.S. Planetary Society, partly as a vehicle for SETI studies, 